Hello everyone, welcome to this session about CSAT. The CSAT, as you know, stands for the Civil Services Aptitude Test. It's part of the UPSC prelims, which consists mostly of, mainly of English and mathematics. This is a qualifying examination, which means that you don't need to score better than anyone else. You just need to make sure that you qualify the exam, that you don't fail it. And that's easy enough. But it might be the case that the basic math and the basic English that is asked in the examination can be challenging. Uh, for some students, either one or the other or both perhaps, because there has been a long time since school or since exposure to mathematics and exposure particularly to solving mathematics. And if that break has occurred, then you might find it a little bit challenging. And so we'll make sure that in this video, after you've seen it, you will have no fear of mathematics that you'll sail through the whole process. You'll know exactly what to do, where to do it from, what to practice, what to look out for. So that in the minimum period of time which you must invest, you invest in CSAT and you get it over with, you get it out of the way. And it should not consume any extra time from you because your time is very valuable and it needs to be invested in the subjects which are competitive and not qualifying. So take a look here at the type of questions which are asked in the prelims. And this is, of course, a recent previous year question of CSAT. Uh, if you notice, the first question is the shape of a three-dimensional figure, and they're asking you how many triangles there are. Now, a question like this essentially represents basic geometry, basic geometry and visualization. We always do this type of visualization in, in everyday life, not realizing it, but it's just that in when you do it in mathematics, when you do it on paper, it requires a bit of thinking and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but you already have this ability. So it's nothing to be intimidated about. Similarly, take a look at the second question. It's a simple calculation. And even though it's simple enough, it does require a little bit of thought, just a little bit until you figure out what's going on. And the symbols actually are the things which might make resistance in your mind. It's the symbols and these numbers which most people are not comfortable with. And I'll tell you why that is. The rest of the questions are simple enough. You'll find questions about speed and distance, basic formulas are used, very basic formulas, no need to memorize any formulas. You'll find basic geometry, the application of trigonometry, right angle triangles, and all of these basic stuff, which I'll tell you exactly where to prepare from, which is not something you should be worried about, not something to be fearful about. But at the same time, there does exist a real phenomena, a real actual syndrome, which affects many people, and it's called math phobia. And um, it essentially starts in school when mathematical concepts are being handed down, they're being taught. And some people, including myself, when I was in school, did not catch up on the mathematical sequence of those ideas. I, I got lost somewhere. And for the longest time, it became a thing of fear for me. I was... I used to dread it. I used to be terrified of it. And, and that lasted for a very long time until I finally overcame that issue and I read about it and I practiced it a bit and I realized that it was nothing to be afraid of. In fact, it was quite interesting. But that became that came much later and I hope that if that's happening to you, then it won't happen to you anymore. If you do have it, you probably have, uh, although this is a little exaggerated, you'll have these type of physical sensations of fear about mathematics and it's just something uncomfortable and something very unnecessary. We need to get it out of the way. And what you need to know about math and what you need to know about math when it pertains to CSAT in particular is that first of all, that it's a language. It's a language in which some relationships are symbolized. They are represented. And imagine if you were asked to boil down some conversation, some statements, boil them down, remove all the English from it, remove all the grammar from it, boil it down just to the basic relationships being talked about in the form of symbols. No words can be used even. If you boil it down to that and if you formalize it, you'll ultimately end up with math and you'll end up with the logic of mathematics and the language that is used. So it's a language and there are symbols. And so if, for instance, you started to learn Mandarin today, then you would find the symbols of Mandarin to be very alien. You wouldn't understand what they mean, but it would take some time for you to develop that pattern recognition in which they begin to make sense. And this is exactly what happens in math as well. Just requires a little bit of an uh, uh, effort and the barrier to entry, once it's broken, it becomes very easy. 
so mathability is something not fixed when people used to assume that like after a certain period of after a certain age your height does not increase and that's a permanent fixed biological trait math is not like that mathematical ability is inherent in all humans we compute we calculate we figure out we do cost benefit analysis we do analysis and comparisons all the time we do this intuitively it's in our brains our brains do it if we did not know how to do it it would not be possible to survive anyone with a basic intelligence can figure this stuff out and even can be very comfortable in sailing through the csat part of the exam a uh, important thing to bear in mind is that most of the issues when they prop up is because math is like a popular tv series now what they do in tv series is that they build on the episodes right the first one will trigger the story and the second one will build on that and so on and so on and they want to make sure that you remain glued to the program and they try to make it as addictive as possible by interlinking it by finishing it at a stage when the other one picks it up and on it goes and this is exactly how math works when you move from addition to multiplication although that's a very simple example as you do that you are basically increasing the scope of your own concepts one concept at a time they all build on each other and after they are formed it should not be a very hard thing for you to figure out what they mean of course it boils down to you practicing and you need to put pen to paper you cannot read math to understand it or to get better at it you have to do math reading math is completely a waste of time don't even waste your time if you are thinking of doing that if you need to learn math if there is something that you need to improve upon it will have to be done on pen and paper you will have to be solving questions you will have to apply yourself you will have to figure it out by yourself there can be no substitute for it it is not like other subjects in which reading can transmit the message in your mind and you can figure out the concept although some examples in math can do that but it is only captured properly and to the extent that it can be applied then to different types of questions in the exam which you've never seen before when you do it yourself so that is something to always keep in mind another thing which is very important here is that most of the errors which they occur when you do math especially in csat when people people realize after having completed the exam that they have made a number of silly mistakes and the simple calculation would have changed the entire uh, game and that usually happens because we are doing to do trying to do math mentally don't do it mentally it is not supposed to be done mentally it is something which is particularly tricky particularly tricky when done mentally there has been a lot of research on this and although this is a tangent if you wish to explore this further check out thinking fast and slow by daniel kahneman it's a wonderful book about how our thought processes work so there is system 1 and there is system 2 in the brain i have spoken about this before system 1 is the uh, slow and the more deliberate type of system in which you take time to analyze it perhaps write it down make sure you figure out what it is about and then arrive at a conclusion system 2 is not like that system 2 is fast it's very intuitive it's supposed to help you make snap judgments right at the moment right when time is an issue what usually happens is at the heat of the moment in the examination when the pressure is high and the time is short you end up using system 2 instead of using 1 and it leads to errors all errors in math which are simple basic errors are because of this issue make sure that does not happen now comes the interesting question of where to prepare math from i've told you that it is a universal thing and when i said universal it has another implication in that you don't need to spend any money with any institute as such to help you teach math it is so universal that it is taught in all countries in the same language and so there are globally a competitive and extremely high quality resources and people all around the world working on mathematical education because in many countries in almost all countries where education levels are high this mathematical ability is considered is very important and including in in india it is stressed and considered quite important but in many cases some people are completely left by the wayside and they never really capture it where to do mathematics from i have a analyzed and seen a number of resources where you can potentially do math from first of all there is no need to buy difficult books there is no need to buy books which have a very high level of um, mathematical 
reasoning and questions are difficult. For instance, in GMAT and GRE, the level can be more advanced. You don't need to go to that level. Okay, you don't need that. What you need to do is simply go to the best resource which is available on the internet in the world to, to, today. And the leader in uh, mathematical education and training is a company, a website called brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is actually brilliant. And I don't know who they are. I don't know who the brain behind it is. I know that it's not an Indian company, but whatever they have done is absolutely phenomenal. You see, mathematics is a very intuitive thing as you just get it. Sometimes the concepts, you just get it and you get it once you, you never forget it. And this is this process, intuitive process. The challenge of it is how do you teach it to someone? How do you convey this? And that person must arrive at it themselves. So that click of the concept must happen in your mind independently. And how does any system make sure that that happens? Of course, if you are not comfortable with math, you have experienced it. The teacher will go on and on explaining something and it will all just sound like absolute gibberish and nothing at all makes sense. Why that happens is because an intuitive click has not happened inside you, right? This uh, website, their program, the way they have structured their quizzes and the way they analyze and take you through the stages is designed to create that intuitive click of math, which I have not seen anywhere else. I have no issue, no hesitation in recommending this uh, particular website. I will take you through a, a tour and I'll tell you what all you need to do when you go to that website because it's very extensive. You don't need to do all of it. You just need to do some one, some basic ones. And so extremely useful, absolutely bypasses the entire requirement of joining a coaching institute. No need to do that at all. I'll take you through brilliant.org and I'll show you what it looks like and how their programs are structured. So as you log on to brilliant.org, you'll find their courses listed out here and you can see that I've been working on some myself because I like to sharpen my mathematical skill. Maybe I'm compensating for the years of not understanding any math. Anyway, there are all types of courses here. If you check out their math courses, these are math courses. Say, for instance, you wish to take the logic course. This is very useful for CSAT, this one. I've listed it in my list of courses to be covered. You'll find all these interactive quizzes. The quizzes are designed to be very intuitive. They use graphics to make it interesting, but that's just part of the brilliance of brilliant.org. They do a lot more. They'll put you in a situation and they'll make you actually solve this question by actually putting up and interacting with these you know, elements. And that's the brilliant part. When you do that, you can check your answer. I'm not thinking about it. I don't know what this is uh, correct or not. But in any case, this is how the whole thing is structured. You'll find other courses as well. And so if you are doing logic, this actually, this one covers a lot of your CSAT abstract reasoning, general mental ability type questions. A lot of them will be covered. I recommend that you do the entire logic part of the course. There are a lot of other courses that they have as well. And so you need to go to the one in math section, the joy of problem solving, for instance, another very, very good resource for understanding mathematical questions. And they'll make sure that you become, learn this process intuitively. You know, the type of question is also very unique, very brilliant, and it will prepare you for all types of other questions. So these type of questions you, you will see, they don't require any mathematical knowledge at all, no formulas, no nothing. It just requires you to figure out which chest it is probably to be in and these type of questions and these type of uh, answers will keep coming. They'll keep training you. And I find it to be one of the best resources ever made by anyone because like I said, it is notoriously hard to teach mathematics. Now, amongst all these courses, which ones are you going to do? Because some of them can be quite advanced. They have courses about uh, fundamental and advanced mathematics as well. You'll see all these courses listed here and all of these courses have a number of quizzes. So you need to complete the quizzes to make sure and they're just in the process of the journey of you solving the quizzes, you'll just figure out the whole thing will become very well ingrained in your mind. You don't need to do all of them. What I have done is I have gone into each of these. I have figured out which ones are required for the level of CSAT and I have made a list. And that list I have shared 
with you in your email so that is something to be uh, considered to be completely taken care of completely done you may need to require you may require their membership and because i did use it for one year i know that their membership is not too expensive and maybe you can try to capture some of these uh, uh, packages for free and use them for the period of time that your examination is coming and then quit their subscription in in any case you don't require a lot of money to get access to it and whatever money you do invest is probably going to be very well worth it and definitely worth uh, your while and much cheaper than any coaching institute so with that math is taken care of there is nothing for you to do except go through the courses that i have listed on brilliant.org you do not require any ncrts you don't need to re read any books you don't need to solve very difficult questions you don't need to be intimidated you need to go through the quizzes in sequence as they build on each other in fact each of them is self consistent so it's better to go from logic and problem solving to the more abstract mathematics in which simple equations or simple geometry like the pythagoras theorem etc will be introduced go to that level finish it off nothing more requires to be done you'll have fun with it and most likely it will end up giving you a mathematical understanding which will remain with you forever and you will not have any anxiety about math so that should take care of your issue i hope that you can uh, make the most of this resource and take this unconventional approach because the conventional approach is very boring and very time consuming with that i leave you and i will see you next time